Hi, I'm Scott Rixner, and today we're going to be talking about the environment that we're going to be using for this class. I really think you're going to like it. However, my opinion might be a little bit biased. Why? Well, this is what I spent my summer vacation doing. I built this environment especially for this class, and this is going to allow us to build interactive applications directly in the web browser. I think this is pretty exciting, and you're not going to find this in any other introductory programming class, so this is going to make this class something special. Right? You can also save and share your files really easily. We basically are storing everything out on the network so that you can easily find it from any machine. You can send it to other people and they can see it as well. So you're going to be able to share the excitement that you're having throughout this class. Okay? Now, to make all this work, we had to use some relatively new web technologies. This means that you have to have a recent version of Chrome, Firefox, or Safari on just about any operating system. Sorry, no Internet Explorer. Why? Well, like I said, these new web technologies are not implemented exactly the same across all browsers, and Internet Explorer is really lagging behind. Hopefully in the future it will work, but for now you have to stick to one of those three browsers. Okay? Now, if you're like one of my, my Rice students, you listened to that, you immediately ignored me, you grabbed your phone, and you said, hey, does it work? Well, I have no idea if it works on your phone, but it does work on mine. Okay. Now you're not going to enjoy editing your code on that small screen, so I do suggest you get one of those browsers so that you can get ready to go, and we'll take a look at our environment. The environment we're going to use in this class is called Code Sculptor. Now why do we call it Code Sculptor? Well, because you're going to be sculpting code. All right, what is Code Sculptor? Well, it's a Python development environment. Why Python? Well, Python is a programming language that is relatively easy to use and learn, but it's still quite powerful. And for that reason, you find it in use in a lot of introductory programming courses. Okay? Code Sculptor also allows us to build interactive programs. Why? Well, we think this is more fun, basically. Most introductory programming classes, you're going to build text-based programs, and it's just boring. Okay? Here, we're going to build interactive games that you can use and play with. All right? And I think that you're going to find this really adds to the experience. And you'll let us know, I'm sure, by the time we're done. But I'm pretty positive you're going to agree with us. And finally, Code Sculptor runs in the browser, and this has a lot of advantages. This basically means that you don't have to install any software, you don't have to worry about it, you can move from computer to computer really easily, your friends can use Code Sculptor, you don't have to worry about having a different version or a slightly different version than anybody else. We all have the same exact version, we're all running, I can, we can have changes and updates applied immediately to everybody. Okay, so I think this is going to make it a, a simple, fun experience. Right? We also, because we're in the browser, we have an easy way of storing and sharing files. Now we're going to put these out in the cloud. What is the cloud? Well, cloud is sort of a nebulous term, but the way that we're going to use that term is there's a bunch of data centers around the world, and these data centers have plenty of storage. When you save your file in Code Sculptor, it goes out to one or more of these data centers. Now it's available on the network from anywhere. You can move computers and get it back. You can move, you can send it in an email and get it back. Right? Basically, you store and save your files and you refer to them by a URL. And as long as you have that URL, you can get at your stuff anywhere and you can start editing and running it anywhere. Okay? All right, we think that this is a unique combination, and you're just not going to find this in any other introductory class. You're probably not going to find it in any other class, quite frankly, and I think this is going to make this class unique, special, and fun, and I really hope you're going to agree. So Code Sculptor is great. I think you're going to like it, and I'm sure you're going to let us know that you like it by the end of the class. I think you'll have a, a good feel for the advantages of doing things this way. There are a couple minor disadvantages, though, that I want to talk about here. Uh, not because they're a big deal, but because I want you to be aware of them, and I don't want them to detract from the class as you're taking it. The first is where there are very few Python libraries implemented in Code Sculptor. Now, what is a library? Well, Python is a language that has some core capabilities that allows you to write whatever program you'd like. And then there are a bunch of libraries that implement specific features. And these are things that you then don't have to redo yourself. Okay, and the Python language has a whole bunch of these libraries. Right? Code Sculptor only implements a few. They only implement the few that we actually need for this course. So the real impact of this is if you Google to try and figure out how to do something in Python, you may find you know, 
pages that say, hey, just use this library and it'll do it for you. And you're not going to be able to do that here. But it's not going to impact you for the things that we're asking you to do here. The second is there are some very minor differences between the Python code sculptor and core Python. And there's only a few of them. These differences are very small and these differences are documented. And when we come across them in the lectures, we'll explain them very clearly. And I think you're not going to really be affected by this. It's just one or two little things. Okay? All right. Now, Code Sculptor was developed specifically for this class. I'm very excited about using it. We've been using it at Rice for a couple of months without really any issue whatsoever. Okay? So I don't think there's going to be a problem, but I want to tell you that we are committed to fixing problems as they happen. So here we are at CodeSculptor, right? www.codesculptor.org. You're going to be using that a lot, so you may as well just bookmark it right now. All right, let me walk you through the main elements of the application. You'll see in the upper left, we have the control area, where we have the buttons that allow us to actually control the application. In the lower left, we have the editor. This is where we actually write our Python programs and build them up as we make our exciting interactive applications. In the lower right, we have the console area. This is where the textual output of your program will go if you have any. And then last but not least, in the upper right, we have the documentation area. And you can see that you can get to the documents, documentation, you can get to some demonstration programs, and you can get, some, get to some videos. Now you can get to some of this from the Coursera website, but it's convenient to have it available directly right here. And one last thing that I want to draw your attention to is this slider bar here in the middle. You can change the amount of area that you allocate to the editor and the console. So you can, when you're editing, give more space over there. And when you're looking at your output, you can give more space over there if you'd like. And that's Code Sculptor. The first program that any computer scientist runs in a new environment is called Hello World. Right? And the point of Hello World is not to actually do anything useful. It's simply to get you familiar with the environment and make sure you can actually run a program. So here we have it. And if we go up into the control area and push the Run button, and you'll notice that when I push it, there is a tooltip that says Run, telling me it's the Run button. And you'll see that what happens out here in the console area is it prints Hello World. And that's what Hello World is supposed to do. Okay, so let's take a look at this program. All right, there are three elements to it. And the first is this first line here is a comment. And comments start with the hashtag. Right? So we got a hashtag and then it says whatever you want. So I can type anything I want after a comment. This is another comment. I can have blank lines. I can do anything I want, basically. Okay. So a comment is a line that gets ignored. So nothing happens in response to a comment. So if it's ignored, why do we do it? Well, comments are there to make your program easier to read and easier to understand for both you and other people reading it. So I would like to see in every program you write for this course and pretty much for the rest of your life as a programmer that you write clear and useful comments that help people understand what's going on in your program. Okay. All right. The second thing in this program is this print command here. What does print say? Print means take the thing that you have after it and send it over here to the console. Okay? Well, what do we have after it? Well, what we have after it is a string, hello world. And a string is just basically a piece of text. And to get a string in Python, you enclose it in quotes. So you can see here that we have single quotes surrounding this hello world that says this is a string and it just means take the text inside of it and use it. So print hello world and you can see that there it goes and it prints. Right? In Python it's a little bit curious. I could use either single or double quotes. Right? But you have to be consistent. You can't have one single and one double quote. And nothing is changed. Right? This is still a string. So I hit run and hey everything's the same. It's like, Wait a minute here. Okay? It didn't look like anything changed. All right? That's where the reset button here comes in. All right, if I hit reset, it clears the console. Now I can run this again, and I can see that it actually did print hello world correctly. All right, now you don't need the reset button. When I hit the run button, it implicitly resets, but you just can't see it because it happened so fast. But let me show you. Okay, so if I, I were to add print hi, okay, and I just hit run, you'll see it did in fact reset the console. It printed hi first and then hello world. Okay, so everything is actually running over here. Okay? So you have the option, option of hitting reset if you like, but you can just hit run. All right? Hey, we've run our first program. Congratulations. So this ends our whirlwind tour of Code Sculptor. 
At this point, we've shown you what it is, we've shown you how to use it, and you've even run a program in it. Well, at least you've watched me run a program in it. So at this point, I encourage you to go to codesculptor.org and try it out. See, what, see that you can run a program in it too. Okay? I mean, you can try the demo program that shows up when you first go there. You can try the Hello World program from this lecture. And after that, you can even try to play some of the games in the demos page. Okay? But you don't need to worry about the Python just yet. Just get yourself familiar with actually using CodeSculptor. At this point, I hope we've whet your appetite for the course and you're excited to get started. I know I am.